Hello everyone, this is Crota with, well, a little bit of, of a request out there that people have been asking me. Some people out there have been asking me, how do I draft? What is a hex draft? And what does it actually mean? What's really going on? How do I do it? So on and so forth. So first of all, I'm going to say hex draft is the best way to build your collection. What it takes is three packs and 100 plat. And what you're going to do is you're going to open those three packs and build a deck. What's the 100 for? The 100, uh, the 100 plat is for 12 packs of, I think, is it 12 packs? 5, 3, 5, 3, 4? 5, 3, 4. A 5, 4, 3, yeah, that, that is 12 packs of price support. So in that pod, you are going to end up getting 12 packs. So if you think about it, 800 plat goes into a draft, 12 packs come out, and there's also chances for primal packs when you win packs. So that is that is the reason why everyone says the best value for getting, the best value in Hex is constantly doing drafts, constantly doing drafts. And as new sets come out, that's what you're going to want to do. Just draft, draft, draft. Um, if you win at least one, if you win one round, you essentially paid 100 plat for two packs. If you do that every other time, if you have a 50% win rate in your first round, you're spending one, 200 plat for two packs, which is really, really good. Yes, it does require you to have packs beforehand, but if you are in this game and you want to play, you're going to be opening packs anyways. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what a draft is. I've said it a couple of times, and I'm probably going to have to make this into multiple videos. Um, a draft, eight players sit down, everyone opens up their pack, and then they choose one card. They then pass their pack to the left. And this is exactly what the screen is. If I, if I point it this way, yeah, if this is exactly what this is. This is the Hex Invitational Draft. This was day two. The top eight players who qualified from around the world were sitting down and they were playing a booster draft together. And this is this was a Swiss draft. Now, as you look here, you're going to see all of the players. There's Value City, Master Mitru, Bootle, Sirius, Koma, Igalov, Jadim, Jedi, and Vazriel. Those are the eight players. Each of their packs are listed. And not only... Okay, first of all, shout out to HexTCGBrowser.com for doing this. This actually blew my mind when this came out because they mined this data. Um, when you were actually watching the Invitational, you only got to see Value Cities draft and his choices. You didn't get to see everyone else's. So that is one of the things that is important. Now, what does it mean when you're drafting your deck? Not only do you just always take the best, best card. No, you do not always take the best card because the best card is not going to have a lot of synergy with other cards that you're going to have. So as you take a look at your draft, your first one to five picks um, generally, you need to be able to adjust, you need to be able to adapt, and you need to be able to see what's coming your way. Also, you need to remember the packs that you, as you get better, as I say this, as you, get, as you get better, you need to remember what you are passing off to your opponent to your left, because the next round, the packs are going to be passed to the right. And what you are giving to your opponent, most likely they are picking up those strong cards that are being passed to your left most likely they're going to choose the same threshold on their next pack and they'll perhaps pass you very strong cards back to the right. Now, if you take a look at this draft here and go to hextcgbrowser.com, the invitational draft, the, it's you know in the browser, you can see it. Uh, I can't even point. It's that way. Um, if you take a look at it, you'll see an, everyone's pick and then you can cycle through the packs. So um, I wanted to go ahead and let's just focus on the overall view. I'll probably have to do, you know, one video per round to do some of the interesting picks and, and so on and so forth. But you can see here, Value City picks a Death Mask Assailant. The Death Mask Assailant is a very, very strong card because it it opens up you to a lot of different routes. Now, you have to have familiarity with what you are drafting, the cards and, and that particular set. Death Mask Assailant, I say, is a very, very, um, it's, it's a decent choice because, first of all, there was nothing in here that was very strong in the, in the uncommon and the rare. In fact, when Blam Sack was opened as the rare, I think people were saying that Corey Jones 
laughed out loud because Value City was the one that was being showcased. So when you open up a Blam Sack, you're like, all right, um, do I want to take this? And now because of this, people end up, you can end up getting additional rares. So if you're trying to just get rares for your collection, like with those one-off rares, drafting is also a good way. But Death Mass Assailant, a solid choice because it opens you, it's not double threshold, right? So you can go... Um, you can go Ruby with anything else. There's a lot of archetypes in Ruby. And I'm, and I'm saying this just as the Armies of Myth draft three pack. There is so much information that you could try to uh, absorb here, but what you really need is experience. I try to draft at least twice a week. Um, I, and that is very, very little. I, I want to actually draft three to four times a week, but my schedule does not allow it. Death Mass Assailant, first card. Ethereal Caller, first card for Master Machu. Grim Harvester, choosing a dual threshold card as your first card and kind of pigeonholes you into what you are trying to do. But at the same time, if you can build that specific archetype deck, then you are then you are in a very, very good position. A tinker of Tinker of Terror, this guy is one of those guys where he is just problematic. You have to deal with him on the board. You cannot let him deal combat damage to your, um, to you as your as the opponent because that Murdertron is absolutely horrible to play against. Coma with the Crocosaur, an extremely extremely strong card, automatic first pick just because of the value, and you are gonna be um, going into triple wild threshold, but. Very few other cards can get you a two to one, two to one value while keeping the keeping the large troop on the board. Crocosaur has been um, has won me many drafts and lost me many drafts. Um, Temptuous Blade Dancer, Wild Ruby, very very strong archetype going all the way through. Golden Avenger, this is just a giant bomb. Uh, five drop, four force flight, swift strike, and when it dies you get a Mask of the Avenger, the Mask of the Avenger. And the Avenger mask basically says, transform target troop you control to a Golden Avenger. So the mask just keeps on transferring and transferring and transferring. So if you deal with one, if they're able to, you know, Pride's Fall, one Golden Avenger, and it just comes back into play. If you're able to kill it, if you're able to Vine Lash it, anything. It just constantly, constantly comes back. Relic of Nazun is... a uh, is a solid pick just because it's an artifact. It does have um, it does have the the socketable major, but mostly likely they'll put in a minor a gem in it. That minor gem can either be flight or unblockable, but it it opens your opens yourself to um, a lot of different things. Now Zakir's whim was not that strong of a card. Ghost feather I I could have made a call for ghost feather as well, but I I think with what he saw here, relic of, of Nazun. Of, of a strong pick because you don't want one player to get too many of these. Now, as I say this, in an actual competitive draft on the live servers, people may have taken more of more of the um, of the rares. I, I'm actually surprised that a martyr got passed. Um, martyr is an extremely extremely strong card. It can be used offensively and defensively. Um, that bootlaces take of martyr. I don't know if I agree with. I would have. I would have personally taken martyr. It is such a strong card, um, just to do whatever you want with. And in, in most likely, Sirius will will pick it up next round, and maybe he'll go into, um, you know, uh, ruby a uh, ruby diamond. Now, as I say this, and I'm uh, see th th this. This is an issue. If you're grabbing Grim Harvester, but you're passing. Martyr. If Sirius picks up Martyr, that means that he's going to be picking up a lot of diamond cards as well. And he might actually be drafting into diamond. And as, as he drafts in the diamond, going back the other way, you are not going to get as many diamond cards. Now, I, I say this all as theory because there are there's essentially eight people drafting and they are all drafting slightly differently. Do they do they want to hate draft? Are they going to purposely pass a card so that they get better cards the next time? All these things can and in fact happen, but each one is playing the game a slightly different way. Now, it's, it's kind of like driving. If everyone drove just like you, the roads would be absolutely perfect. And, and that's true. If everyone, if everyone was exactly the same, then people, 
pe people who are aggressive drivers, if everyone was an aggressive driver, roads would go faster. People would not, not like an aggressive driver and then a cautious driver. That's when accidents happen. But you can't have that. And not everyone's going to be drafting the same way here. All right. I'm already like, I don't know how many minutes into this. And this is my, this is only the first round. So this might be an extremely long tutorial, but you guys have asked for it. I might only do the fir first round. If you guys want the second round and third rounds, let me know and I'll make those videos. But my voice is going to be really, really bad later. All right. So that was just the first pick. So you now go next pack and it passes and you see everyone pass everything around. Key things to note. Eagle Love got a Temptuous Blade Dancer last time. So Temptuous Blade Dancer, extremely strong, powerful card, right? Extremely powerful card. And he has two of them in his first two picks. So he is pretty much pit, he is pretty much going straight into um, Ruby Wild. Now behind him, Koma is also looking to go into wi uh, Ruby Wild as well. You remember the Crocosaur and the Ruby Threshold. So things are going to get really, really interesting around Koma and Igolov in terms of taking picks. Sirius does grab the Martyr, which is a very, very strong card. Death Mask Assailant was grabbed there, um, What was the, uh, which really confuses me because he grabbed a Grim Harvester the first time. So that, that was um, a, a bit of a... Of a, of a head scratcher neophyte awakener if you are looking to do a lot of a lot of reverting and shifting play um, that can work out extremely well um, his first pick was ethereal color so yeah that looks like the route he is going to be going you can do do that with um you can do that with a number of shards i personally like it with highlands um highlands black belt but you can't always guarantee yourself a highlands black belt um, highlands black belt was how i got into the top eight of one of the invitationals, but yeah, that that's for another time. Ghost Feather, um, yeah, strong pick that I mentioned earlier. Storm Drummer is a, a powerful one drop because it it empowers your next drop. You don't know what that next drop is going to be, but it, it does empower it. Um, Pyre Soul Summoner was in fact passed, so I am I am curious as to how far this is going to go. Value City might end up taking it because Pyre Soul Summoner is one of those very very powerful cards. The previous pack was the Relic of Nazoon, so um, I'm actually surprised that a Pyre Soul Summoner wasn't taken here. Um, you could easily go Relic of Nazoon, Pyre Soul Summoner, throw in the double um, double Ruby Threshold a gem that says you can't be blocked, and then try to go into. Uh, into a ruby a ruby uh diamond route so uh, both of those very very strong there um sky dancer was picked up so you got so you remember J jj originally went for uh, a golden avenger and now went in, into a sky dancer so he's just taking he right now he's just taking the best card from every single pack he doesn't want to um go specifically into any any real route yet so let's go ahead and go into the next pack as well um Chim chimera guard fallen dream pick for master machu um chimera guard fallen with ozo with the neophyte awakener you're constantly able to shift this extremely powerful ability onto another troop and um, i've i've gotten to it where i was able to neophyte awakener um, or play the Chimera Guard Fallen, shift over his ability, um, revert the Chimera Guard Fallen, shift over his ability again, and all of a sudden I'm swinging in for 16 because of the just the amount of damage and everything that's happening and, and the vitality or the defense on that particular troop. So very, very strong pick from Master Machu there. Psychic Torment. Now, JJ is completely across the board here. And... I don't. If you guys haven't seen the invitational draft yet, um, j just just watch it, or you you can read up on it. But JJ is really all over the place here. You you remember previous pick was Sky Dancer. His first pick was Golden Avenger. His third pick was Psychic Torment. Very all over the place. Predator and Prey. You can see Coma is going um, going the route of of just Ruby Wa uh, Ruby. Uh, Ruby Wild, Eagolov grabbing a Thunderfield, a Thunderfield Seer. Um, not quite sure what um, what he could have grabbed here. This may have been more of a hate draft, but and since he probably knows that he's um, going into the Temptuous Blade Dancer, he could have grabbed an Ash, Ashwood Soloist to try to get up there higher. Lightning Brave, yeah, there's not really that much in here. Vine Lash, he probably thinks those other cards could get passed around. 
He doesn't want to give someone else card advantage. Vazriel um, continuing to... Well, what was his first pick? Okay, so it looks as though he was... Um, oh, he's going He's going wild. So go, picking up the Merry Minstrels. Pyrosol Summoner picked up by Value City. Um, very, very strong pick, as I said earlier. Um, and now with the Ghost Feather and the Death Mass Asylum, that actually goes exactly into his archetype. I, mean, I am quite surprised. I don't know if they agreed on these particular deck archetypes that they were going in for. But yeah, Pyrosol Summoner, extremely, extremely strong. Now, a couple of key things to note as things go around. Uh, Egolov, or Koma and Egolov probably know the, the route that they're going. JJ has been all over the board, so he has not figured out what exactly he's um, really, really drafting yet. Vazriel is, seems to be going very heavy. Um, well, Value City as well, going Diamond, Ruby. And there's so much that I'm trying to process here. So you'll, ex you'll excuse me because this is just all like coming from my head, and I did not prep all of this. I do not have a template. I'm just going at it right now. Chimera Guard Fallen, very strong um, strong as well. It looks like Bootlace. What was Bootlace's? Death Mass Assailant, Grim Harvester. So, yeah, Bootlace seems to be a little bit all over the place as well. He doesn't know what he's what he is really going for. He has three shards or three thresholds in his deck already. Uh, Sirius um, looks like he's going to be going uh, Ruby... Uh, Diamond Ruby, so the same as Value City, if you're taking a look at it. Koma and Igolov are probably going to be going the same thing as well. Uh, maybe Koma might go Mono, mono Wild. Uh, we'll see if how far, because Crocosaur does take three th three f f thresholds. Right to the Tranquil Dream is also pretty strong. Arachnomancer, Blamsack. So you can see that the there are still a couple of rares being passed around here. All right, let's go on to the fourth pick. Wow, I'm not even 25% of the way done. All right, Emperor's Lackey, uh, a strong card with strong reversion. Another Neophyte Awakener for Master uh, Machu. I think he grabbed one earlier. Yeah, there was that. So he has two. I wish I could see like what what the actual cards were by hovering over their names. Um, wait, if I can I click on this and what does it give me? Oh, oh wow. It does tell me the picked cards. Oh, this is awesome. All right, so you can see what was actually picked by each of the players so far at, in, in their rounds. Th this is absolutely blowing my mind. So Master Machu, Ethereal Caller, Neophyte Awakener, Chim Chimera Guard Fallen, and another Neophyte Awakener as his next pick. Um, Bootlace, um, you can see he's kind of all over the place with his thresholds. Sirius is, yeah, going into that uh, Diamond uh, diamond Ruby. Coma, so far, you know, you, he could pull back from, from Ruby. You don't know yet. Eagle Love, grab that Thunderfield Seer, but the two Temptress Blade Dancers, you probably know he's going to be going that route. JJ is... Um, across the board, still slightly confusing. Um, Golden Avenger, Sky Dancer, um, Psychic Torment, and Lightning Brave. Vazriel. Um, so far, it looks like he's going to be going Ruby Wild. Value City is going um, Diamond. So these two are drafting similar. Vazriel and Igolov and Koma are drafting similar. Master Master Machu may it seems to just be going Mono. Um, mono Diamond, and if he can go Mono Diamond and get more Chimera Guard Fallen, so he'll do well as well. Um, Bootlace and Bootlace and JJ a, a little bit confused in terms of what they're grabbing. So Lightning Brave, Boomsmith, so on and so forth. Now, this is where things get interesting. There is still a Zakir's Whim, Blamsack, and a Demon of Dusk. The Demon of Dusk is a very, very difficult card to play because of the triple threshold, but it can be a bomb. The problem is that the longer it is a bomb, the the easier it is, it is eventually to, to get taken out because you're going to be giving your oppo opponent a Celestial of Dawn, which is a very, very powerful card that actually trumps the Demon of Dust. So that's something that you do, do, do have to worry about. Now, Rotcast picked up by JJ. So now he is going into four different thresholds. The Golden Avenger may, may have just been a first hate pick. You, you don't really know. Um, let's take a look at Koma. Yes, he looks like he's going into the Ruby Wild. Um, Ruby Wild here. You can see the, Fu the Fury Seeker there. Value City. Uh, oh, seriously. Me. Vazriel still going that Ruby Wild as well. Grabbing a Vine Lash. Um, Value City. There you go. So the bashers are a basher getting taken, uh, bootlace getting another ethereal caller or 
So yeah, Ethereal Caller as the first pick here, um, grabbing an Inflict Doubt and, and passing the Ethereal Caller, that was a little bit of a, of a questionable move in my mind. Um, Hold on. So what, no, what did he, oh, no? He picked up a neophyte awakener. Okay, yeah, neophyte awakener over the ethereal caller. And um, yeah, I agree with that. So so far, this is round one of the draft, and you, you can see how things are going now. Are things really this complex? You're trying to absorb a whole bunch of information, eight decisions being made at the same time based off of the previous, based off of what's being passed to you. This is why when someone asks me how do you draft, I, I just look at you like. I don't even know where to begin. I'm five picks into this draft and it's extremely difficult to, to say what's happening. Next pack, JJ now grabs a Demon of Dusk, which is helpful because the turn before he got into Rotcast. So at this point, he he has two Psychic Torments, Lightning Brave, Rotcast, Demon of Dusk. Psychic Torment is a difficult uncommon to get, but is perfect in the spiders. And that may be the direction he starts to take. And I think that is ultimately the direction he starts to take. Um, let's take a look back over here. Knights, uh, Night Sky Stargazer. So Master Machu going into Wild. Um, normally, Wild is not the direction you take in a, in a Shift Reverter deck. But it, it, it's all right. Um, Bootlace is coming in. He's picking up a lunge, so he's he's going into... I, I don't know what Bootlace is really going. He he seems to be um, deciding... He, he's definitely in Diamond. He just doesn't know if he's going to be Diamond uh, Blood or Diamond Diamond Ruby. Sirius is um, looking to almost go or continue to go into that um, what Ruby Diamond. And the problem for him is that the the people all in front of him, three people in front of Sirius, are drafting diamond is it yeah three people in front of Sirius is drafting diamond so he has a strong martyr as his second pick but he may not be able to get to it and this is this is one of those situations where you just have to start reading the signs like okay what's getting passed what's not getting passed right what what do i really really want to grab and and those are the questions all right so let's continue continue to go along this route uh, a throwback, a, th a throwback. So now he's deciding to switch things up, go into, um, go into Sapphire, knowing, reading the signals that uh, not enough diamonds coming around his way. Coma picking up and countering up with a periphery. He does. He sees that there's nothing else in here that's um, really that strong for Ruby Wild. I mean, the um, ambusher could be str could be strong. Stinkhorn soup, uh, yeah, but nothing really in here that's that strong here. Zakir's whim being taken, Dream Smoke, Mystic, um, people not really grabbing a lot of the things that they really need. You can see the epiph Epiphany not really strong there. Uh, value, value City getting value out of uh, a potential uh, Pyro Knight right there. All right, let's go into the next pack. Um, you can see a thun JJ grabbing a Thunderfield Seer. He's, he's going to be able to draw a little bit more cards. Um, Coma. Yeah, grabbing a tree guard that is a, a solid body, a four drop, four three. It is an elf, so if you get blade dancers or anything, or not blade dancers, anything else that can pump elves or elf allegiance, that does help. Um, off over here, Eagle Elf grabs an Ashwood Soloist, uh, but um, Jadim Jedi looks like he's going to be. I can tell he's going to be grabbing that Hatchery Cultivator that next next turn. Um, Sirius, um, you can see that he read the cues correctly and is now drafting not diamond because no diamond is being passed his way and he's seen more and more sapphire. Uh, Scrapyard Bruiser, uh, yeah, all three of these, really not that strong. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, this is not, um, what, Primal Dawn, so Ruby Sapphire is not that strong of an archetype yet. Um, doesn't have that great synergy working together. Hatchery Broodguard, I believe, from Master Machu, is more of a hate pick. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want Spiderlings to be given to anyone. Um, he could have grabbed Rites of the Tranquil Dream. That might have actually been a, a fairly decent pick, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm only going to do one round of this draft. If you guys want more of my analysis, I will give it, but yeah, it really depends. This, this is going to be a very long video, and I'm going to be tired after it. Pick number nine, yeah, Hatchery Cultivator, uh, a dream pick at at this point. Like you can take a look. At his first four cards seem like I have absolutely no idea what I'm gonna dr be drafting. And then after that, Rotcast, Demon of Dust, Thunderfield, here, Hatchery Cultivator. He's gonna be looking, and he's gonna be looking for um for 
for spiders. And Eagle of, rightfully so, is removing spiders from, and so is Coma. So people are noticing, wait a second, a lot of, a lot of spiders are being passed around. I do not want um, people to, to be able to build a very, very strong spider deck. Uh, and, you know, spoiler alert, JJ builds a very, very strong spider deck. All right. So just taking a look at look, look here and the, as the later, later, later picks go, you start to get faster and faster. And that, that's what happens. All right. Lightning brave, a, a strong pick once more Four drop three, two flyer. That's quick. So you can, you can play it out on your opponent's turn to block, a perhaps a one, one or a one, two, you don't really want to block a two, one or, or a two, two with it. You could block a 3-3 three, three or a 4-3. Um, Sunseer being placed down by Sirius. You can see he's um, he, uh, well, he seems confused on whether he wants to go with which route still. Coma countering with the uh, with the wind speaker. I'm not 100 percent sure. Like I think that's more of a hate pick. He knows that it's not going to be that great for him. The web guard. Wow. So people are just um, people are just grabbing and taking away all of um, all of the spiders they're just trying to hate draft all the spiders going around value city grabbing an ethereal eyes a very very strong removal perfect for golden avenger still things going around you can see master machu it looks like oh he it looks like he's might be going into blood we'll, we'll continue to see what he's doing now more blood there so removing the wild i i didn't agree with the two wild picks uh, just because it doesn't help as much you if if you're looking to do you know, shift and reversion with the two Neophyte Awakeners that you have, you should need more things that have shift and shift is generally found on um, necrotic, necrotic. Well, there are no necrotic wild that I know of. Um, so yeah, so continuing right to the Tranquil Dream, a really, really solid pick for Coma as his 11th pick because um, it's just card quality and it also pumps up your stuff. Um, Taint uh, getting removed there, Devoted Infuser. The only only real pick for coming in for JJ Windborn Disciple coming in for Vazriel. Um yeah, right there. So let's take a look. How much Sapphire is being picked up? Sirius can't decide if he's going Sapphire or um, Sapphire or Diamond. He's opening himself to options, but with a seventeen card pack, you can do that. All right, and Value City very very or a decent uh ruby ruby diamond deck another pack tireless researcher when this ready is draw a card so um yeah decent card there ambusher you can see the Necro necropolis tablets are three of them are still getting passed around two blam sacks are still getting passed around and this is where things just are going to go very, very quickly. I'm surprised that, um, no, oh, Gemsoul Feeder over uh, Creepy Conspirators. Yeah, th that was probably the, the choice there. But Life Drain, 3-drop, 2-do Life Drain sh with Shift, very, very strong. Keep on going. Shadow Blade Assassin, the Lethal, Snarling Ambusher, Tireless Researcher. Still going around there. You can see what people are, ah, uh, what people are, are drafting and, and going for. Smashadon, Shadowblade Assassin, Rites of the Tranquil Dream. Oh, wait, another Rites of the Tranquil Dream was passed? So Rites of the Tranquil Dream was passed there. Another one was passed, but he decided to, to hate draft the Shadowblade Assassin. You don't want to give people lethal. Um, Untamed Dustwing. A lot of these cards are pretty much going to be just throwaway cards here. Shadowblade Assassin, probably some of the stronger picks still available. Red for a Ranger, a, a very strong pick at this stage in the game for Coma being able to grab um, something that is useful to his deck, you know, prophesize with crush, keep on going, suffocate. So JJ getting, um, getting a little bit more into the, into the, what's it called? The, the spider, th spider signs, spoke signals, granite giant. A at this point, there's not very, very many strong picks because you're down to the last four packs or four picks in your 17 card pack. People have pretty much picked it apart. And at this point, you're just passing the trash. All right. So you can see all of the picks there entangling webs. Um, you, you just want to make sure that you're grabbing stuff that other people are not, are not going to find useful. You don't want someone coming across like, well, a red for a ranger at this stage is extremely strong. Um, Epiphany incubate. I well, is JJ gonna take the incubate? Oh no, he takes the epiphany. Yeah, card draw advantage, much much stronger, and you know, granite giant. Okay, just passing everything else. And as a seventeenth pick, wow, a, 
Necropolis tablet, Necropolis tablet. You know, see, so a Blam Sack as your last pick, and which is funny because Value City opened that Blam Sack. He opened that Blam Sack, and it got passed all the way around, all the way around, and he still ended up with it. All right, so that's round one of the Hex Invitational Draft. If you guys want me to keep going, um, well, I need more likes, more views on this because this video takes quite a bit of time to just talk through. And yeah, just let me know if, if it is really helpful. If you guys have any questions about drafting, let me know. But I hope you guys do enjoy, did enjoy this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed round one of the Hex Invitational Draft.